says those neurons that fire together wire together, right? So we need to get people doing those habits. One thing that is unfortunate when you get compromised or you, you find out you have an illness, maybe it hits you like a ton of bricks. Maybe you're doing really great. And I know with autoimmune, you could be doing great one day and the next day you find yourself laid up. You don't know what happened, like what my body is turning on me. And the reality is that it happened two years ago. Q Music. Places, everybody places. We're starting in three, two. Welcome to the Autoimmune Hour, where we look at the rise of autoimmune disorders. I've brought together top experts that range from doctors, specialists, nutritionists, researchers, and even those recovering from autoimmune to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information about autoimmunity and how to live your life uninterrupted. Thank you for joining us here on the Autoimmune Hour with Sharon Saylor. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio. And we don't want you to worry about taking too many notes, so you can join the Autoimmune Hour's Courage Club, and we'll send you the transcripts and show notes from every episode. Sign up now at understandingautoimmune.com. Now, back to your host, Sharon Saylor. Welcome, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour. I'm Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And as always, it's just my honor and pleasure to be with you again. Oh, my gosh. You know, here on Ohm Times Radio, we've done over 200 episodes, and the show is well into 300 episodes on other uh, podcast places. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of our community and and extending this long and fabulous run. I just heard that we were number two in the autoimmune alternative health shows you should be listening to in 2021. Can you believe it? Thank you, community. I am so thrilled. Let's move that up to number one, okay? (laughs) So thank you, community. Oh, you guys know I love you. Thank you for sending me the notes. And one of the things I keep getting a lot of notes from either on Facebook or through the email at understandingautoimmune.com is about, you know, I think a lot of people had magical thinking that poof, 2021 would come and all the stress and all anxiety and all that craziness of 2020 would just disappear. And I'm hearing now we're into February and people are saying, hmm, that didn't happen. So I've got an expert on today to talk to us about stress, anxiety, sort of dealing with the emotional toll of 2021 and and all of those sorts of things, because I think it's going to be a real issue. And this is not just for those with autoimmune. So gather all your family and friends around and listen in, because I think we could all stand to hear from Patrick Porter. He's an award-winning author and speaker and has devoted his career to neuroscience and brainwave entrainment. He is the creator of Brain Tap. We'll get into that later into the show because right now I want to bring him on and just talk to him about this emotional toll of 2020 and what we need to do. So welcome to the show, Patrick. Well, thanks for having me, Sharon. It's great to be here. I don't know if you've noticed that some people seem to have magical thinking that at the clock uh, clock tolling 2021, all of a sudden the world would return to normal. And now that that hasn't happened, what are some tips that you have that people can go, okay, you know, that didn't happen. Let's, uh, how do I settle down and get on with it? Well, I think the main thing to do is to avoid certain things that are causing our stress. We need to, we need to avoid mainstream media. We get our news early in the day because you don't want that to interfere with your sleep. Your biggest thing for your nervous system, and a lot of people think the nervous system's in the body, but maybe from your show, they understand that 70% of the nervous system's in the brain. So something called psychoimmunology. So we need to be careful of what thoughts we're thinking because those thoughts create our physical reality, our physiological state, if you want to think about it that way. So I think the main thing is to monitor our thoughts. We, we are big believers in mindfulness. So as we watch those thoughts, we get a chance to edit them. And it's not to be negative with yourself or bring yourself down. We're, we live in a culture, unfortunately, that kind of promotes negative thinking. And if that can cause something called chronic low level stress. So one of the biggest things you can do with your physical body to get rid of that stress, if it's appropriate for you, and you're in a place where you can do it, I know in the 
up north, you might not be able to do it, but if you can get outside and ground yourself, our bodies are designed to be symbiotic with the earth. And which means that our body needs the earth frequencies. And if we get outside and we do that, that's why playing outside is so important. But without your shoes, I'm talking about get on the earth. And a lot of publications that talk about how we're disassociated. A lot of people are fearful of their electronics. They're inside their homes. Get outside, get some fresh air. Our homes are 400 times more toxic than outside air. So if you don't get outside, if you can open up your windows, uh, get some fresh air into your home start breathing, start exercising. We got to get our physiology. You know, they say that sitting is the new smoking. And what are people doing today? They're they're getting up late. They're rolling out of bed. They set up their computer. They're at work. You know, it's not the same as it used to be. You know, we used to get up early, do our exercise or whatever we were going to do in the morning, drive to our office, whatever our job was. Then we had a clear distinction between work home and play. Now it's all in the same place. So we need to start creating what might be called anchors or situations because now when people sit down to watch television with their laptop in their lap and they're doing their work, that is also causing a big stress on our nervous system because we can't really parallel process. I mean, a lot of people do it and they think they're doing it well, but research shows that when you split your attention, you really do two jobs poorly, not either job as well as you could. So having that focus. And I think the other is to learn some kind of breathing technique. Our nervous system is linked to our breath and our breath is linked to our heart. And a lot of people don't understand how the heart works, but our heart has 40,000 neutrino cells, which means we have a heart brain. And that's the brain that controls your world because that brain tells the heart, this big brain in our head what to do. It also tells us our even bigger brain that's in our gut because the the psycho the immune system actually resides in the gut mostly not in the head but we have to have these these three working together this triad the, your heart's got to be in it your brain's got to be in it your gut's got to be in it you know if, if you don't have good gut flora you're going to have some problems there too so i mean those are just a, some basic things too is to get up in the morning before you have your coffee i'm not a, i'm not a big coffee drinker i mean i drink coffee occasionally but the reality is that if the first thing you put in your body is something that's toxic and your body's at a cascade for chasing that health, have a big glass of water, maybe even some sea salt in that water. And there's, when you look at Celtic sea salt, you can get that right at your grocery store. It's that's different than table salt. And your body needs that. And we, we need that to really just kickstart our, our system so that we can start functioning the way we were intended. Those are a couple of little tips. I'll give some more along the way. Oh my goodness. So much to unpack there. <laughs> my brain is just going multiple directions here. Absolutely. I am a huge fan of grounding, even if it's wet and cold, because my favorite place to go, and I'm thinking that because you mentioned sea salt too, my favorite place to go is to walk barefooted, or at least to sit there barefooted in the sand at the beach. And now I can kind of understand when you're talking about sea salt, maybe I'm breathing a little bit of the real stuff in (laughs) as I'm sitting there. And I find that a really easy way for me to de-stress. And luckily, I live just oh about an hour away from a really nice beach. Great. And you're also getting a couple other benefits by being near the near the sea because the earth has frequencies in our brain. When we talked about brainwave entrainment, we're all entrained to our environment. So when we walk outside, our nervous system is used to shivering if it's cold or sweating if it's hot. But we also have other things that are happening in our body. Our brain actually shifts and changes. So when you take that walk along the ocean, you're getting an ion bath, which is really good for your body. But you're also train, in training your brain to a frequency called alpha And everybody listening has been in that state many times. They think about when they're doing their hobbies or something they enjoy doing, or if they're sitting with a friend talking and they look up and they go, wow, I can't believe it's been three or four hours because it's a timeless place. And when people get near the ocean, and that's a biological thing about our, about the human condition, 90% of all humans live within driving distance of a big body of water. And the reason for that is when you look at the population in the United States from, from space, you'll see the lights on the coast and around bodies of water because we, our bodies are designed to keep us alive. So if we venture off into the desert, you know, we're not going to live too long. And even though we, our culture has changed, we've transformed our world through technology, these bodies are still 100,000 years old or more. You know, they haven't really evolved as fast. You know, we have this primitive reflexes and stress responses. So just getting out in nature uh, is going to get us to basically disengage that nervous system. The worst thing that's happened to people today, in, in the, especially what happened in 2020, is we get that high stress, 
we, we say chronic low level stress. People are under the stress. They don't know they're under stress. Kind of like that movie, I see dead people and they don't know they're dead. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> we see stressed out people and they don't know they're stressed because they're, our body is very adaptive. And unfortunately it can become so stressful that we become paralyzed and we don't do anything because I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Emoto's work. He wrote the book, Secret Life of Water. Yes. And he's passed away now, but he was one of the professors we brought out to Quantum University we're on the Dean of Brain-Based Medicine there, but we, we brought him out to show how our thoughts affect our body's biological systems. And he shows that when you think of thought, it cha- you can imprint water with your thoughts and you, they crystallize it and shows these beautiful images. And he did one with COVID, or not him, he was passed away, but it's his lab. And I got to have them on my podcast and it was pretty cool. They showed the picture of COVID and how it affects our body. And he took fear in COVID and it made it look demonic, but he took gratitude in COVID and it neutralized it. So that's how powerful our thoughts are. We can neutralize these things. I'm not saying we could neutralize COVID. It depends on your belief system and what's going on. I'm saying that the, the fear part of it is worse than the COVID is my point. We need to take care of ourselves, be very cautious of what we're doing, but know that we have a very beautifully made and powerful nervous system and body that can trigger our immune system and keep us functioning at the highest level. And you're doing something, I mean, getting out there in nature is one of the best things we can do. In in China, in Japan, they have something called forest walking. They walk outside and just by walking in the woods, we get these uh, neurotransmitters are released, these endorphins are released just because the interaction with plants. And we have a symbiotic reaction with nature. I mean, we're designed to be outside 14 to 18 hours a day. Of course, we have synthetic light now. So we're on Netflix till two in the morning or <laughs> whatever, depending, <laughs> upon your, depending upon what you're doing. So there's the, you know, we need to figure out really, this has given us time to figure out how does our body really function? And we need to move. Our bodies are designed, our nervous system are designed to move and breathe. And if we keep doing that, we're going to be healthier than if we set in fear. <laughs> you know, that's the... Oh. That's the for sure. And, you know, I think this low level fear you talk about is, is very critically important for people to understand that you can think that you feel fine. But if there's just any little bit of angst, it, not only is it detrimental to the whole system, but it begins to knock your immune system down as well. And gosh, that's the last thing we want to do. We want to keep our immune system up and strong and vital during this time. Well, at all times, obviously, but especially now with all the variants coming out. And I know I'm, li- I'm lucky and live close to a beach. And I, you mentioned forest walking, forest bathing, as they call it. One of the things that I like to say is it, being around a waterfall to me is, for me, almost just as invigorating as being around the ocean. And I, <laughs> I'm just wondering if it's the salt difference, but I find that anytime I can get out in nature, so just bundle up guys, it's really great. One funny thing that I have found though, Dr. Porter, is that when I'm just walking in the neighborhood and this it, it sort of creates a little bit of anxiety to be honest, People that I used to know in the neighborhood that would walk up, you'd chit chat, hey, how are you doing? Now you see them, they cross the street, walk on the other sidewalk. I mean, I understand, but there's also this little bit of angst or anxiety that happens when my friend will wave, you know, <laughs> from 40 feet away because they just crossed the street. Right. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of fear that um, and I think the science shows that you don't have to really worry about that outside. As long as there's sunlight, it's going to kill any virus. It doesn't it doesn't exist out there. But still, people have to be could be in their sweat. I mean, in their spit and things like that. So they have to protect themselves. But I think the the reality is that we've been unfortunately, we've been we've been triggered to think that we're going to get it from someone else. And that could be possible. Right. So you don't know who that person is. But I think that the, the main thing is, is just to stay positive and to know that, I mean, look at things like Wim Hof. I mean, if people don't know who he is, they should, he's a crazy guy that, that actually does his breathing technique and sits in ice water. But he has been, they've actually injected him with almost, not, not the COVID, but and lots of other viruses. And he kills them right away because our body is so powerful. We have a very powerful immune system. And if we're positive or we're eating the right foods, we're thinking proper thoughts, and one of the things here, and I don't know if they understand everyone out there, how important sleep is. In 2016, Scientific America actually had a report that came out that was so, so incredible. We know that we have a lymphatic system for those who know about the physiology of the body. 
but they didn't know that we had a, a glial lymphomic system in the brain, which means that our brain actually doesn't detox unless we reach level four sleep. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, chronic levels of stress stop you from reaching that deep level, which is called level four sleep or delta sleep. And so getting into that deep level four sleep is probably the best thing you can do to detox the brain and toxins. We always say there's three reasons people get sick, thoughts, traumas, or toxins, right? So uh, we can clean up the thoughts. We can, we can clean up the, the trauma, but if you still have toxins in your body, we need to clear those out and your body's designed to do that. You know, breathing is one way to get the, the lymphatic system does not have a heart. So the, the heart pumps the blood around the body every 45 seconds, you know, but the, the, lymph, the lymph system, if you set, it, it basically sits, it's like a stagnant pond. And what happens when we have a stagnant pond, we get algae and we get, you know, lily pads, <laughs> but it, you know, in, in, my, in my home, if you came here, you'd see that we have a little mini tramp and every morning we get up and do 10 minutes on it because I used to have a franchise company and we used to teach that to people wanting to lose weight because the lymph system, so you can jump rope, you can walk and breathe. That's why walking is so important. So, and walking is probably one of the best things they can do for their brain too. So as you think, because we don't really realize how important walking is to our evolution. We have a distributor system, which is our balance. And as we get better looking and more intelligent with age, certain things happen to that area of our body, right? We, get, we lose our balance. But what we found in the lab is that it's actually a brainwave called SMR, sensory motor rhythm. Once we encourage them through like mindfulness meditation techniques to re-engage with that brainwave, which is the one between being awake and being in that alpha state, that relaxed state, there's a small brainwave set. Once you do that, we have actually shown that you can increase your balance without doing any exercises other than breathing and visualization and relaxation techniques, because the brain, the brain stem really is what we're talking about here. It needs that it needs to be readjusted and recalibrated. And because of our lifestyles, we're not doing what we used to do, right? We, we learned to write with our right or left hand. We don't, you know, really people with the most robust immune systems and best functioning are either dancers, they do yoga, they do Tai Chi. Uh, they do something to keep themselves moving and like a whole body, a whole brain kind of activity, not just, I mean, doing fun things like gardening, those are all good things because you're using both hands, but you, you have to find the level of function that you need. And when you do that, what happens is when you go to sleep at night, then your brain is able to go through those different brain waves and reach that deep level for sleep. And if people are wondering, I wonder if I get level for sleep, if you've ever woke up in the middle of the night and you had sleep paralysis you know, like you couldn't move your body, which most people have at some point in their life. That's when you woke up in the middle of a cleaning system, a cleaning cycle, because basically you're taken offline. Usually you're not around, you know, you're in deep, you're in deep Delta. So, so you're <laughs> unconscious, <good>. right? <laughs> you're, you're, you're wherever we go, which uh, if somebody could bring a camcorder with them to wherever we go and we sleep, I think it'd be pretty exciting, but we're just not there on a conscious level. And that's also when you're sleeping on the couch and somebody tries to wake you up and you don't even move. And then uh, 45 minutes later, you're, you know, well, why didn't you tell me I, my neck hurts? I, I shouldn't have fell asleep on the couch, but we tried to wake you, but you were, you were out. You were in that deep level of sleep where your body is really in your brain is really cleansing itself. And it happens seven to eight times during the night. And you'll know if that's happening because you'll have clearer thoughts. You won't have headaches, you know, different things happen. And it's, it's all a function of sleep, really more than it is anything else. Wow. A couple of things that came to mind as we were chatting about that is two things I want to chat about is the sleep, because I find so many people now binge watching and fall asleep with the television on. And I, I keep thinking, what are all of those verbiages that are happening via the television sort of programming your brain? And we need to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I want to talk more about that, as well as the idea of previous to that, that we were talking about is moving because a lot of people with autoimmune, it's not as easy as just putting on your sneakers and going out and playing a set of tennis or something like that. And so we'll talk about that too, some techniques that we can do on moving when we're just working up to being able to do that and optimizing to be able to do that. So we'll be right back. Life Interrupted Radio will return after these messages from our sponsors. It's great sponsors like these that keep this show coming to you every week. Be sure and stop by LifeInterruptedRadio.com to learn more. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. 
a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Listen and imagine. It takes five seconds to send a text, and for those five seconds, you're driving blind. Life is worth more than a text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Sharon, and of course you know me from here on the Autoimmune Hour. Maybe you don't know I'm also an author. My latest book is for kids. It's Pinky Chenille and the Rainbow Hunters, a winner of a five-star reader's favorite review. It's perfect for your early reader and a great bedtime story for your young adventurers. Check it out over at PinkyChenille.com. That's P-I-N-K-Y-C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E dot com. See you there. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour. I'm Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. Tonight, we're here with Patrick Porter, PhD. He's an award-winning author and speaker and trainer. And some of his books are Discover the Language of the Mind and Six Secrets of Genius. Also, Thrive in Overdrive and, oh my gosh, just many, many other things. And we've been talking about the brain and how our thoughts and our feelings and whether we let those run away with us or not are keeping us stuck and maybe keeping our immune system stuck in a not so helpful place. And Patrick has just given us a multitude of thoughts and tips and tricks here. Patrick, I wanted to go back a little bit and talk about, I absolutely agree that uh, exercise and keeping this body moving is critical to well-being and wellness and keeping that immune system really just tip top. But as I was early in my diagnosis and as I was beginning to work through and optimize the body once again, I have to say walking, because part of my diagnosis was extreme muscle weakness and fatigue, uh, it wasn't that easy to put one foot in front of the other. I wanted to share a couple of tips and tricks, and maybe you can comment on them, is when I first started to again be able to walk, one of the things that was important was just knowing that, okay, I'm only going to walk from this chair to that chair. And maybe it was two feet, maybe it was four feet, and then we kept spreading it out. And so whatever you're able to do, the lymph system will appreciate it, whether it's just standing up and shaking a little bit like a wet puppy, or if it's walking a a mile or two, and knowing that you will get there. So continue to optimize, optimize, optimize. Yeah, I think it's important that people disengage or get their nervous system to release because what happens is people get stuck. It's like having, we have an automatic transmission. Let's say our brain can flow between these different states. We get energy. If you have a high delta, which when we've measured people's brains, when especially when they have um, autoimmune disorders, is they're going to have more than 60 to 70% of their brain in delta while they're awake. So think about it like pushing a parachute behind you. Your brain knows subconsciously that you need to go to sleep to heal, to rest, relax, digest all the things that our body knows how to do. But then of course we need to live our life and we need, and we need to give it the sustainability. So one of the things we even have people do is even while you're sitting watching TV, you can even squeeze a ball, just getting in switch hands, you know, just even that can be is if that's all you can do at first, because the the nervous system, the brain, unfortunately is an energy hog. It uses 25% of all the energy in the body and only weighs three to five pounds. So when it has a disorder, whether it's an autoimmune disorder, which they're now saying like even dementia is an autoimmune disorder, like type three diabetes. 
So we uh, literally think of it like your body is turning on itself and it doesn't know what to do because of instruction sets or whatever at a cellular level. But when we start to focus the energy of the body just on small task and breathing is even a way, remember breathing it might be the first start and you can do like box breathing. And that's really simple. You breathe into the metal kind of four, hold it to the metal kind of four, breathe out to the metal kind of four. And then when it's out, hold it to the metal kind of four. That's one that people do. And what I tell people, if they don't have any, just have a little reminder there. If you're watching television, when the commercials come on, instead of being enthralled by the commercial, just do that breathing, <laughs> breathe, do that two to three minute breathing and do it often. It's not something you just do once. It's something you do often. And then there's another breathing technique that is really good to really kickstart our parasympathetic system. So there's two brains, if you can think with me, Sharon, for a minute, we have, and I'll tell you the science names, but I call it the thriving brain and the surviving brain. Okay, so mo- when you're- those are, those are good terms for it, yeah. yeah so when you think about that, we have this sympathetic system and what it does, it's our fight or flight response. And when that gets engaged to such a point that we get locked in like a gear shifter, instead of it being an auto, we can't flow back and forth. And this is our electrical system. Our electrical system is pretty much infinite. We can bring in energy, we can do these kind of things, but our biological system is finite. So that's when the body starts to turn on itself because the biological system to handle and manage stress in our day-to-day functions is almost like, if you will, like a having a, there's a hurricane and you need a, a battery charger, or you need some kind of way to get energy into the, your home, you're going to have a generator. So it's kind of like using, but that's finite. When we turn on the parasympathetic, which I call the thriving brain, then we have all this energy. And that's what happens when you're doing things you love. So we need to teach the body to disengage. It's natural to be in this fear, this fight or flight. But our ancestors, if we think about our ancestors, this only happened four or five times a week, maybe. You know, you might come across a saber-toothed tiger or you might... (laughs) You, you might have a fear that you're not going to find berries or, you know, whatever. And that would trigger this kind of response. But most people now, unfortunately, get this before breakfast three or four times, and then they condition it. It's a response now. The worst thing that can happen to a person is they go to sleep stressed and they wake up stressed. And what I'm saying is they, what they do is they set their alarm clock, right? And Sharon, if you, if anybody sets their alarm clock, they've set up what's called anticipatory stress. Because your subconscious knows at six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, you're going to hear this loud, obnoxious noise, and it's going to jolt your nervous system. Now, if you have a really good nervous system, no problem. You just go about your business and do it. But if you have a weakened nervous system, you can put you on edge the rest of the day. So what I recommend if somebody's out there going, well, how do I wake up? They sell alarms now that actually wake you up to light. So when I was in India, and I I travel a lot to India because we have several universities, there are six different um, high-level universities like the Government Institute of Medical Science or the All Indian Institute of Medical Science. We went over there to show them about, to teach them about light because we do a lot with light therapy in the brain. And their science actually, their their, um, ancient teachings actually talk about how the light from the sun actually wakes up our body. So they have, our Western technology says they, I don't know if they did it based on their scriptures, but there is, we have light systems that actually wake somebody up. So it's like the sunrise, because that sunrise actually is an instruction set to our body. We are biological beings. Every cell of our body has a, like a battery that absorbs light or photaic energy. And that's how we get energy and it gives us ATP production. And that's what gives you the energy to walk across the room, to walk to that next chair, to in our bodies are designed to take it in through sound. We, we listen to 25,000 pieces of information every second, and we convert that into energy. That's why if you're at a rock concert or you're at some place where you like the music, you, you maybe don't want to go there, but by the end of it, you're tapping your foot, you're shaking, you want to dance because you've converted that into energy. Now, our brain only acts on 40 pieces of that information, but that doesn't mean that our brain doesn't interpret it, filter it. Now, if our nervous system's function, functioning well, we can flow with that information. If it isn't, then it becomes overloaded to our nervous system and is a burden to our system. So with, with it, the light and sound of our reality that we live in, that's part of what the nervous system's job is. And if we start by exercising the nervous system, walking, breathing, uh, sleeping better, these are things that are going to, people are going to see it translate into measurable energy within a short period of time. I mean, it's, it's something that our bodies are designed to heal themselves, to create peak performance levels. I mean, think about it. Our genetics, whoever's listening to this, you have the genetics that have made it. 
I mean, think of all of your ancestors. They went through a lot to get you to this point in time. So you're not a weak person. Your body knows what to do. We've got to provide it the right information. And that's food as well as I'm sure you've talked about that. And we, we have exercise thoughts. There's different things that we need to do. So unfortunately, when you get into a traumatic situation or when your body is compromised, you got to put a lot more effort into it. And, and then, but once your body gets balanced, it's a lot easier for a flight, you know, an airplane, right? That to, once it's taken off, it, they say it uses 125% of its usable energy just to take off from the runway. And then it uses only 10 to 15% of its energy to soar across the sky. So we need to get people lifted off and, and to know, hey, there is a possibility. The worst thing that can happen to somebody with any illness is to lose their hope. Yeah, we talk here about the word optimize instead of, oh, I'm going to be healed. No, taking it one day at a time, <laughs> just optimize as you go. It doesn't have to be a big optimize, as I like to say. It could be a small optimize. And always being gratitude for the body. I'm always amazed at how the body reacts to simple things like gratitude. Now, I just want to take a, a little turn here. And one of the things that you had mentioned is light. And we've talked here and we're going to have more talk ab about it because we're so locked into our homes now. And just by artificial light, not only the artificial part about it, but a lot of people don't realize that e the electromagnetic fields that the artificial light systems are all worried about their computer screen, but they don't think about their light bulbs or anything like that. I love that you mentioned that and being, mm -hmm. I'm one of those that throw open the curtains and get as much sunlight in the house as you can. Exactly. We, there are three primary um, bands that we really need. And you think about sunrise and sunset, those are the best. So if you can get out and watch those sunrises and sunset, your body is getting the lights. They call them chromoforms in the cells when, if people want to look that up. But we, our body absorbs that light. Even right now, Sharon, your body through photobiomodulation, through something called biophotons, is what's keeping you alive right now. It's not the food that you ate. It's at, they now know that your genetic structure, like what turns on and turns off is controlled by the 99% of that DNA that they don't know what it does, but they do know that bio photons, light emits every 40 seconds. So when somebody says they're a light being, it used to be a metaphysical concept. Now it's a scientific <laughs> fact. We are light. That's what we are. And so uh, this band of fibers that come through our body that they call the dura or the fascia, which if you go to a massage therapist and they massage you, that's what they're working on. Science is now considering that like fiber optic cables. So when you think about fiber optic cables, we're sending light through the body. This light that if we don't have ATP, remember, if we don't have the energy, then we can't, it's like having, we might have a hundred watt bulb, but we're only sending 20 watts to the bulb. So we need, to, we need to get everybody turning up so they get that 100-watt light bulb. And then their body, the genetics, can turn on those healing genetics that are there. And it's, it's really part in, and then that goes to the, the brain, which is, which is my part, which is the Hebb's law, which says those neurons that fire together, wire together, right? So we need to get people doing those habits. You know, one thing that is unfortunate when you get compromised or you, you find out you have an illness and maybe it hits you like a ton of bricks, maybe you're doing really great. And I know with autoimmune, you could be doing great one day and the next day you find yourself laid up. You don't know what happened, like what my body is turning on me. And the reality is that it happened two years ago. The body that you have right now isn't, you didn't make that at your last meal. You made that two years ago and your emotional body, the way your thoughts you know, feelings and, and attitudes that might've been gifted to you by mom, dad, brother, sister, teacher, preacher, you know, all those yeah. people that, that added in all those things. And, and I always look at it and this is one of the things when anything happens to me, I have to remember it always happens through me because anything that we process, it comes through our eyes, ears, our senses, and we process that information. And some people will process, um, like if, if somebody were to look at my TED talk, I started out by saying I was blessed to be the son of an alcoholic because I had to reframe that, right? I mean, if I said, right. wow, poor me, my dad was an alcoholic. I, you know, my, I am Patrick Kelly, by the way. So I should be at, a, at the bar. I should be having a, a Mai Tai here or, or at least a uh, breakfast drink or something, you know, but I choose not to do that. So there's certain things that mom and dad did or brothers and sisters. When we look at our past, it can tell us how we got here, but it might not tell us how to get out of here. 
you know, that's why we have to go. <laughs> it rarely coaching. tells us how to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's why you need a guide. You need like these podcasts that you're doing and you need a coach, somebody who's been there, done that. You need to find Rambo, you know, who's, who's been through the jungles, who knows the terrain that knows how to get you to sur not just survive, but to thrive, you know, and there are people, the nice thing now is that with the internet and with all the information we have available to us, there's a lot of information. Now it's where do you go to get the right information? Because obviously we have a lot of information out there. And I think the, the right information is you have to first think, wow, this is something I need. Then test it for yourself. Find out if it works for you and be open-minded. Like I said, hope is the biggest thing. In fact, our, we did a summit just recently called the Optimal Performance Summit because we also believe that same way. You have to optimize your body's nervous system, optimize your brain function. And it's not about not doing it or doing it. It's about, this is the way we have to live. I mean, there are people that thrive into older age and there are people that, you know, they retire and they expire. You know, we need to get people to, to figure out, hey, one day at a time, like you said, figure out a plan. And I, I love the old adage that they attributed to an Indian, but I'm not sure exactly who it was right now. But they said, live your life today as if it's the last day of your life, but as if you're going to live forever. You know, so, so you know, that's, <laughs> you know, so, so when you think about it, goals are good, but for health goals, it's a daily thing. It's a lifestyle. We need to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about this idea of lifestyle one day at a time. I love the quote about live your life for today, but prepare for tomorrow. So we'll, we'll be right back. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Research shows we apologize up to 10 times a day, and most of the time, we say sorry as a response to someone else's mistake. What if we thanked people instead of all that unnecessary apologizing? So instead of saying, sorry, I'm rambling, you say, thank you for listening. Join us at projectforgive.com, a free non-religious resource on global forgiveness. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour. I'm Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And tonight we're here with Patrick Porter. He's a PhD and award-winning author, speaker, and then he's devoted his career to neuroscience and brainwave entrainment. He's the creator of Brain Tap. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But Patrick, a couple of the things I wanted to talk about was this idea of, I think people are like, but Patrick, how come, you know, when I cut my hand, that's right now, right here. And you mentioned that we're living in a body that we created days, weeks, years ago. And I think a lot of people don't understand how trauma, anxiety, stress, et cetera, embed in the body, but take a while to manifest in the physical. So let's chat a little bit about that. Yeah, we call these things Delta imprints. And I'll just give you an example. I was working with a client a number of years ago, but on the phone, he said he had chronic pain in his left foot and he couldn't get rid of it. So he, he makes his way to the clinic and I realized when he gets there that he has no legs Wow! And, and it didn't manifest right away. It manifested like two months after he was sent home from Vietnam. He jumped out of a helicopter at about the second floor. And when he landed, he landed on a landmine, blew off his legs. Well, and, he, and it didn't get triggered till he went up to the second floor of a building. Oh. 
And after that, the pain would keep. Tr so his trigger was basically being at the height of the helicopter. And then, you know, the pain was still there. But most people don't understand pain is in the brain. Pain is not in the body. It only happens in a brainwave state called, a, called beta, which is where we're talking right now. And so what we had to do is we had to use a metaphor. And I, I don't need to go into all that. But after the session was over and the, and the pain had dissipated and was gone, he didn't have a foot. So why should he continue to get the, it's a signal from the body. So, but let's say that it was somebody else. Like, let's say that you get an emotional, emotional trauma can be worse than physical trauma. So and the reason Absolutely. for that is we are energy beings. And when I talked about that heart center having 40,000 neutrino cells, there's more heart attacks on Monday morning than any other day of the week because people don't have their heart in their job. Now, I don't, I'm not sure with what happened in 2020 if people know the difference between Monday or Saturday. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, It's <laughs> funny you brought that up. That was my first thought. Well, now that we're working from home, I have a lot of friends that work seven days a week and you call them and you say, hey, it's Tuesday. Thought we were going to chat Tuesday. Go, oh, it's Tuesday? <laughs> exactly. In some people, they've actually found this to be true in psychology that some people have a scar in their body, like a traumatic event, but then they go through the therapy, whatever that is, and they resolve that issue and the scar goes away. So you need to think about your body like the hard drive to a computer. And people like Louise Hay, if you've never heard of her book, it's You Can Heal Your Life. It's a great book. And it gives the body part and it gives the affirmation to start resolving it. Now, of course, this is general, so it might not be true. Every one of them might not be true for every person, but we found that it was very valid. You know, like the knees have to do with change, for instance, mm -hmm. the right side of your body has to do with uh, giving and the left side receiving and things like that. There's just different things. And when you start to work on, there's never a true healing in the body without an emotional component. And to give you an idea too, we just, we did a study uh, two years ago with Kansas State University for PTSD. These were vets that came back and they weren't sleeping. So we started working with them and we weren't getting the results we wanted. So I had them listen to our grieving program first. And they said, why would we have them listen to their grieving program? I said, well, one thing is they were watching death all around them. They were uncertainty, fear. Those are all really negative. They're, those are all immune suppressing experiences, you know, that, that happen. So we have to teach them how to release, forgive. And there's a structure to to grieving. I mean, the only religion that I know of that actually has a grieving protocol is the Jewish religion. They have eight days of grieving and you actually follow a protocol. They know how to do that. And, but in a, nobody's really trained. When I went to my first funeral, all I thought, all I was told was grandpa's not there, you know, and I'm like, yeah. well, where did grandpa go? What am I supposed to do? I'm used to going to grandpa's, at, you know, on, on the weekends, uh, but grandpa's not. So we're, we're kind of left in the dark. So we don't know how to grieve. We don't know how to release. Think of it like this, Sharon, when you, your brain is so powerful, a 100 billion neural bit processor in every moment in time, it's projecting out into an infinite field of possibility, your future. And when it shows up and we like it, we're happy. This is called happiness because things are happening in a series that we like. But if they don't, we become unhappy. And even Buddha said, Buddha said, all unhappiness stems from unfavorable comparisons. So when we think about our future, but our brain is always creating our future, always, 100% of the time. And if we take our past, if we let our past dictate our future, like let's say we had bad relationships. And we just weren't trained. Your mom and dad weren't good trainers at relationships. And then we get into relationships and go, I was never going to marry my, my mother. I was never going to marry my father. But then you find out you did. You know, and then right. you I call that same, same man, same woman, different body. <laughs> yes, there you go. So the thing is that we have to figure out where can we break that pattern? And how can we create a different timeline is the words that we would use, of course, in therapy was what, what would be the timeline? What would be the shift on that timeline? Now, if we don't shift that timeline and resolve the past, we can't, we, the past brought us to this moment in time. So we can't discount it. You know, we have to say, hey, the past is valid. We might not like it. We might not like what happened to us, but it brought us to the moment of awareness. Like even somebody being on, being listening to this podcast right now, it might be your first podcast you've listened to with Sharon. You go, Wow, you're here for a reason. There is no happenstance. There's no coincidence in this universe. I like to tell people, you're here by divine decree. Now, you don't know that on a conscious level, but if you live your life that way, it becomes magical. Things change. Then you go, wow, if this is magical, what else can be magical? What else can happen? You know, as Einstein said, you can either live your life as nothing is a miracle or as everything is a miracle. And I think 
if you live your life as if everything's a miracle, whatever that illness is, and I haven't had this specific illness, but I was hospitalized in 1986 with a disorder that made it look like I had Parkinson's. I couldn't speak. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. Myself, I was praying and I had a spontaneous healing for, with something. I don't know what healed me even, but it changed the course of my life because I was open to that possibility. You have to be open to that possibility. But if you go into your illness thinking that the only solution comes from a pill, a bottle, or you know something like that, the solution will eventually come from you. It will come from deep within you. It's very hard when you first get a diagnosis, overwhelming. They use great big words. Like when they gave me my diagnosis, I'd never heard that word before. Could have been supercalifragilistic, expialidocious <laughs> for all I heard, because my ears went closed, obviously. Yeah. And I think the thing is important to understand is a lot of times they'll give you the really bad stats, you know? <laughs> mm. Oh, Sharon, it's this and this and this, and you're going to, the rest of your life's going to be right downhill from here. And I, it's critical to surround yourself with people and, and friends, family, maybe not, they're not the ones because they're all like, oh, Sharon, I'm so sad for you. And like, well, that doesn't help. So surround yourself with the right people that you can learn from, help you make meaning about all of this, help you guide you and it really just explore. Because to me, the best people that have been in, as, as I look back through my healing process, my optimization process. I'm not healed. I understand that. I think a lot of doctors will tell you that. I remember one doctor telling me I was in remission and then wagged the finger and said, you're not healed. And I said, I don't care. I feel great. Whatever label you want to put on, it's not my problem. <laughs> That's your label. And I think it's important that as we're talking about the part that our brain plays here in defining what happens to us, even if at the moment that you're going through, is not where you want to be, is not ideal, it's critically important to be able to bring yourself through that process and surround yourself with the right people and the right opportunities. And even in your work, you do a lot of work in meditation and gratitude training, those sorts of things. Let's chat a little bit about, because we're just down to the last 10 minutes, about the power of self-talk, visualization, creative visual visualization, and you've mentioned the word biohacking. So now that's a really long question, <laughs> but I, I, let's jump into that. First, let me, uh, I love Wayne Dyer said, never let an old person inhabit your body. I think that's the number one step. You, you, <laughs> yes. should, you, need, to, you need to always think about the future. Even in the worst situations, you should be dreaming in your mind that there are no limits. But if you put the limits of your diagnosis into your dreams, you've robbed yourself of even that enjoyment. So give yourself permission in your dreams to dream of what you're going to do, who you're going to spend time with, what are the joys in your life, and give gratitude to those ones you had in the past. Because if you can't think about the future because your past is so bad, you need to get beyond that for a moment. Think of those joys. So when we talk about visualization, when you think about something, you bring about a physiological change. For instance, Sharon, if I ask you to think of one of your favorite memories in your life, you don't have to tell me what that is. You think about it. If you make it a little brighter, you know, it's like 3M. You want to make it a little brighter. Usually that's better. You want to put your favorite music in the background. Like a Hollywood producer took that script. They might even, you know, even put more joy into that script than you remembered. If you can do that and put together your own success reel, that's what I tell people that are going through any diagnosis. You should practice putting together your success reel. And every day your goal should be to find one more of those positive memories. Because when you do that, you start putting the success reel and that's your go to bed visualization. If you can go to bed doing that, we have this powerful computer. Remember, 100 billion neural bit processor. Every great inventor on the planet, from Einstein, Edison, even Elon Musk, when they say, what do you do when you sleep? I problem solve. That's what they do. So your brain only has one job to keep you alive, to keep you thriving. If you, if you fill it with the disease or the disorder or the dysfunction, then it thinks that's what you want. So yeah. give yourself permission to put that on the shelf. That's real. You don't, you don't want to deny it. It's true. Say, but for right now, and I still remember my sister-in-law and she was diagnosed with stage four cancer and she lived for two years longer than they diagnosed her. And she used to say, when somebody would say, well, how can you handle this? Why are you so happy you're going to die? And she says, but not today. Yeah. And I still remember that. So, and my wife still uses that sometimes when she's really stressed out, she'll say, Krista said, not today. And that that's disengaging 
Our, because our brain doesn't know the difference between real or imagined. I handed you a quarter lemon and I asked you to bite down on it. You smelled the lemon and you, the spray of the lemon, you might do like 99% of the people do. You start salivating and the listeners might even find that too, because the brain doesn't know that the lemon was just in your imagination. It wasn't real, but the body saw the image in your imagination. It created the, the gastatory process that happened. So you would digest those acids from the lemon. That happens with every thought. So visualization is really key. And the other thing is that people like Bruce Lipton, who's also one of the teachers we bring out to Quantum University, he wrote the book, Biology of Belief. I think everyone should read that book if they haven't oh, read it. Oh, it's a fantastic yeah. book. Yes. And what Bruce says is that through visualization now, through they now know through science, that they can measure these gene expressions. You can change 2,300 gene expressions just by the visualizations you're using, by the words, in fact, that you're using. And that's why I said at the very beginning, if you can get a little mindful, don't, don't try to be perfect. There's a saying that I love from my NLP training days that, uh, it was either Bandler or Grinder. I can't remember which one said it, but they said anything worth doing well is worth doing terribly at first. So don't try to be perfect. Just do it and just sit and relax. Put on some classical music. What happens if you put on classical music, you can get that for free. So it doesn't cost anything. Your brain has something called the Mozart effect. The Mozart effect says that your brain will balance. People just become smarter when they listen to that kind of music because we live in a synchronized universe. If you don't believe me, go to YouTube, put in synchronizing metronomes, and they'll show you just hundreds of videos of people starting metronomes at all different times. And within three minutes, those metronomes are all synchronized. Science doesn't know why that happens, but it also happens in our brain. We know it happens. It takes three to four minutes to do it. So if you can take even five minutes to sit with classical music, that's the freebie, the way to do it. And you can do that right before sleep too. And maybe even do a body scan when you get used to it. You know, go, do, go through your body, find out where the stressors are and just breathe into those areas. And that will release the stress and tension, but your brain gets synchronized before you go to sleep because it's the imbalance that causes the, the dysfunction in thinking. And that's when the self-talk becomes negative because the brain is trying to bring balance. But if you're doing, if, because of what's happening in your body, if you're not totally balanced right now, it's going to try to sink it. So but if people can't do that, that's where our technology, that's why in the 80s, I, when I invented the very first portable light and sound machine, I did that for people in pain because pain, again, only happens in the state of beta. So if we can get them out of beta and into alpha and theta, which is when you talked about television, I wanted to make this point. When you're sitting in front of the television and you zone out or you fall asleep, you're in a state called hypernesia, super memory. So that's why most people will remember, maybe you're watching a movie about something joyful, but then it flips the next movie becomes one about war. Now you're dreaming about being in the war, you know, and you wake up and go, why am I dreaming about that? War? Well, it was on the television, you know, <laughs> just like if you have, you know, so, so we need to really be careful about what we're putting into our brains, just like we put, be careful about what we put into our bodies. And this all plays a role. So there is technology that that's how my dad got help when my dad became free from alcoholism was he went to technology driven meditation that led him to becoming a silver mind control instructor, which is a meditation process, which led him to learning from John Grinder and Richard Bandler in LP and, and him telling me, hey, you got to learn this too, because it's more than we thought about. And then we learned, of course, hypnosis and other things along the way from Laura Ewing and people like that along the way. I've, I've been fortunate. I've trained with about 63 different really high level teachers, because there's, there's so many geniuses out there and how this works. You, you really need to keep learning and growing. And if you're somebody who's sitting there going, gosh, I don't know what I can do. The first step is to start learning, just like they're doing here, listening to this podcast, it, it broaden your horizon. When your brain knows that there's something exciting out there, something that might help you, it might be this podcast, might be the next podcast, your, your brain then seeks that and our brain is a goal striving organism. So if we keep it thinking positive, it's going to find positive results. One of my favorite things, we're just down to the last three minutes, so I'll say this really quickly, guys. One of my favorite things is to have a lot of gratitude statements in the morning, even as simple as thank you for waking up today, body, and we're going to have a great day, putting those sorts of things in. Tell us really quickly about BrainTap and a little bit about where they can find out more information. Right. If they go to braintap.pro, actually for 99 cents, they can get a free book, one of my co copy of the book, Thrive and Overdrive. They also can get 15 days free 
with that 99 cents on the app. So they can try it for themselves. We have sessions for the morning. We call it digital coffee to wake up the brain. We have reboot sessions for the middle of the day, which we've shown in science can increase the energy of the body by about 80%, or you can regain what you had in the morning, about 80% of that. And then we have sessions that put you to sleep, Delta sessions. And if they want to find out about the research, there's one braintapresearch.com. That's not a sales page. It's we're, we're partners with 11 different major universities, Duke University being one of them. They can read about the science that backs this up because we're constantly doing different studies and, and research processes. Oh, absolutely. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of anything you can do to release old traumas, bring yourself back to the place that you're supposed to be, sort of centered and grounded and having a thriving life regardless of your diagnosis thank you so much patrick porter he's the award-winning author and speaker and the creator of brain tap everyone go over there and check that out have a great week whatever your adventures join me next week for another brand new episode enjoy the information provided on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio, including the websites understandingautoimmune.com and lifeinterruptedradio.com, plus social media, is for educational purposes only. What you read, hear, and see on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio, and its websites, and other media outlets is based on experience only. The information should never be used for any legal, diagnostic, or treatment purposes. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio. Hi, this is Sharon, and of course you know me from here on the Autoimmune Hour. Maybe you don't know I'm also an author. My latest book is for kids. It's Pinky Chenille and the Rainbow Hunters, a winner of a five-star reader's favorite review. It's perfect for your early reader and a great bedtime story for your young adventurers. Check it out over at PinkyChenille.com. That's P-I-N-K-Y-C-H-E-N-I-L-L-E dot com. See you there.